Welcome to Just Want a Quilt, a research podcast coming out of Tulane University Law School, where we explore all kinds of things, stories about quilting, tools, field trips, maybe some famous quilters stop by, and of course, a little bit of copyright thrown in just for fun. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Townsend Gard. I'm a law professor, and I just want a quilt. So today we have Jana Zweiman of the WelcomeBlanket.org. Jana is really amazing. She is also one of the main people behind the Pussy Hat Project, which for me was a really big deal. I made like 20 plus um, pink hats. Um, and as many ways why this project started was um, to see that huge amount of pink in D.C. and the movement of people making that seemed so invisible until you saw that space um, was huge. So um, I am so excited to have her um, come today. And we will be chatting. How are you? I'm oh, hold good. On one How are you? Doing well. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? I totally can hear you. Are you cool with us recording this for our podcast? Oh, absolutely. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> Otherwise, we cool. could just have coffee. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Exactly. I totally agree. Okay. So, first of all, um, I'm like, I don't get very, um, I do a lot of these interviews, but I'm way overly fangirling that you're here today. So that doesn't usually happen. So I'm super psyched that you're here oh, on like I'm a so thousand excited. levels. So um, so before I forget, we're going to, um, because we are preserving these for the Quilt Alliance. Um, can you mm-hmm. tell me, I know who you are, but can you tell me your name and where you're calling from? Sure. My name is Jaina Swyman and um, we're talking, I'm over in Los Angeles oh, and cool. I'm uh, I have a Boston number, which you might have seen, uh-huh. uh, which is where I'm from. But uh, I am co-creator and co-founder of Pussy Hat Project and the creator and founder of Welcome Blanket. Well, we're super psyched. Okay, so we have one quick question that we ask everybody, and then I want to talk to you about both projects, if that works for you. Fantastic. Okay, cool. So what's your first memory of someone sewing or quilting in your life? Um, well, my grandmother was a really good sewer and, um, we used to call her Bubby and we'd have these sheets called Bubby sheets, which was really just a duvet. Yeah. <laughs> which was just this duvet and they were purple. Yeah. And even like years after she's passed, like yeah. I, I still have them. Oh, that's so cool. Um, really really lovely um I do have to confess that I am a quilting fangirl um and it's the next thing that I'm picking up but I have slow to learn the craft so I'm fangirling so many things and I'm just so amazed at how incredible like how incredible the craft is both historically and how important it is now. Hugely, so, right? Yeah. On, so on every level. We've been doing this project for about a year now and um, it's just incredible. Like I just cannot believe sort of the depth of what quilting is. It's really remarkable. It's remarkable. And I love that it's couched in, you know, so much, so much of our history and also that it's so, it's so pertinent now. It's just, it's, it's beautiful and it's um yeah so it's it's such an honor to be here I hope it's oh. this is how you know interesting for your listeners <laughs> oh, no. so, okay so I have to tell you yeah. my little story connected to you so um I just can't believe I'm talking to you because I'm super psyched so um so you know Hillary lost so that's still like every time I'm upset about something I always like that's where I start <laughs> like it doesn't really matter what's happening in my life um and I found the pussy hat project and I made like 25 hats like, I just kept making hats because, like, I couldn't do anything else. I was really sad and really mad. And your project was, like, so I need to ex- have you explain. So, and then I sent them to D.C. I, I registered them on their site. And um, I got little notes back from strangers. And we made a, a um, we made a banner, a big seven-foot quilting banner that went to went there and came back. And we came, went to our local one in, in New Orleans. And I made hats for everybody. And people kept wanting more hats even after it was like this thing. So you've been really hugely part of my, um, my life and my mourning and my anger um, for a long <laughs> time. So and then – and then I want you to explain what the Pussy Hat Project is in case people don't know it. And then in – so oh, actually, why don't you do that? Why don't you tell people what the Pussy Hat Project is in case they don't know? And then I'll have one more related story to it. Great. Um, and thank you so much for sharing. Like, that's kind of the most exciting part about this project. So yeah. 
Um, the Pussy Hat Project started um, with two main aims. One was to create a strong visual statement on the Washington Mall um, for the Women's March in 2017, because the more you're seen, the more you're heard. And it was the idea of a sea of pink pixels um, so that you could see all these different individuals and all of us all together. And then the other part was to create a way for people who weren't able to be on the mall to be able to participate and actually physically be there in in hat form. So even, you know, there's so many reasons why people couldn't go. Oh, it could have been medical or financial or scheduling or, you know, a gazillion. Um, and this was a way to really connect, uh, which was, you know, really like at the heart of the matter. Like there's so many, so many people who felt, um, I mean, I went to my local knit store um, after the election like on November 10th, just to sort of sort out what happened. And this was a way of really for people to connect with each other. Um, so it we we did create a sea of pink, which was we really in- did. So beautiful. So I just can't even. So so the, part of this project comes out of your project. So what mm-hmm. I was amazed at was um, we all were knitting and sewing and making hats independently from for like six weeks, right? Two months. Mm-hmm. There were people making hats, and yeah. then that day, the sea of pink. Like, Mm -hmm. I even get kind of teary thinking about it now. It was unbelievable, right? Like, around the world. Were you amazed that that was – I mean, you probably knew that that was happening. But, like, it. you just started – like, it's hard to imagine you starting with, okay, I'm going to make a pink hat at my local knitting shop to to that, you know? Absolutely. And it's – you know, it's – so my, um, I co-created it with, um, Christa, who's a writer and she was going to the March and I couldn't march. So it was like a marcher and a non-marcher coming together, which really represents a lot of the people. Yeah, <laughs> who usually, were right? you know? Um, and so my background's in architecture and design. So in many ways like this, you know, it's, it's designed to be as, you know, in such a tiny group of people, you're like, well, how do I do it? And it's designed like the way that you'd either take it yourself or give it to a friend. Right. Or we partnered with, I think, 175 local yarn stores. You know, they were like these community hubs. Um, and you know, local yarn stores function as local community hubs. You know, they're yeah. totally people who don't know about them would walk in and be like, wow, like this place is like just, it feels good to be here. I'm yeah. coming back. How did you quickly um, yeah. do that? How did you get 175 shops? Because this was a very fast timeline to get all of this up and running, right? Super fast. Yeah. So from the time, um, November 10th, we started talking about it. And then we launched the day before Thanksgiving, which I think gave us like 59 or 60 days. Amazing. And so yeah, it was, you know, a lot of it happened in our local yarn store. Um, Kat Coyle, who owns the Little Knittery, um, designed the Pussy Hat. And, you know, a lot of the input was let's make something that's really easy to make. Like yeah. we're not even talking about circular knitting needles and yeah. however you make it is fine. Yeah. Um, that includes sewing, crochet, um, worsted weight yarn, which is um, uh, like the easiest kind to find. So you yeah. could go to a fancy store, or like, you know, your local big box store and find it. Um, so we're really trying to make it accessible as possible. And we, we put together a manifesto of what the project was, what we were trying to do, um, how it was going to work. And we even, I, I didn't want to launch until we knew how to place in DC to send them. Um, <laughs> Cause <laughs> you've got to let people know where to send things. Um, and then a wonderful a person in our community was like, you know, um, who goes by Miss Molly. She's like, you know, my goddaughter, Molly, um, needs something to do over Christmas vacation while she's home from college. Like, <laughs> like oh you God. know, oh, like, no. they live in, like we love this family. They live in Reston, Virginia. They'll totally do this. And it's so funny because you know, the younger Molly had to go back to college and her, her moms were like, yeah, let's just keep doing this. Like, <laughs> we're good. So like, this is great. Yeah. So it's like all these people chipping in together. Yeah. And when I hear you talk about like you had to do something. I had I to do something. And my this, and my my dad's um, girlfriend, his high school girlfriend, now is his. My mom passed away. Now she's his girlfriend again after like fifty years or something. She came and she was knitting, and like it was just like oh. it was so communal. I mean, it's still like it's yeah. it was everything. And and that day, I mean, were you amazed? I mean, like, did you have any idea how many pink cats there would be around the world? 
Oh my God. It's amazing. Cause we, you know, we were tiny, like part of me, like when they first started coming into rest in Virginia, we were, you know, taking photos, and <laughs> you know, cataloging them at the beginning, but we made it so that as few as possible came through like us, right? Yeah. Cause I mean, we can't, I mean, there's no way. There's no way. Um, there's yeah. no way. So it was just, you know, the things that just were the most incredible to me were all these stories that yeah. like, I was getting the best email, yeah. like the best emails of people imagine. who Right. Yeah. Yeah. We're just like, I can't go because of this reason. You know, like I have to take care of my mother. Like I can't leave. Like she marched with King, you know, like it's, you know, but this is our way of, of, you know, showing, you know, activism and support or, you know, all those things. So that was the part that was crazy. But then, you know, to just incredible, right? It was, it was the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. The idea that all of us that weren't there were there and that all these pink hats were made by Mm -hmm. all these millions of people and that they were there. And it was that, as you said, the sea of pink, like it was, it was incredible, right? It was, inc- I mean, obviously it was incredible, but it was like monumentally incredible. Yeah. And that they were in, like you said, that they were handmade. They were handmade. Right? And how like, invisible we were. Like we were all these people making things in our house. And yeah. I mean, the thing is like, I'm super political. So get, don't get me wrong. I'm super political, That's but not. like, <laughs> there's like, there's no doubt. Like I've got my women's, my, my, all my pink hat stuff's in my office in my law school. Like uh, there's no, I'm not hiding my politics, but yeah. like, there's a lot of us and there's a lot of us who aren't Hillary fans still mm-hmm. making things and charity and doing all these things. Like the of amount course. of handwork and craft work and love and it's incredible what's going on in our house and our houses, even though we're like, most of us are working full time and have kids and parents that are ill and blah, 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 blah. Um, incredible. incredible yeah. Right. I, incredible. And yeah. the thing, um, the thing that I didn't mention before that maybe your listeners might or might not know is that we also asked when people made these hats to include a note with them, yeah. you know, we did. sending them or giving them. Thank yeah. you. We did. <laughs> we did. We did. That. We did. We did all the things. Yeah. I was, we, we followed directions. We followed directions. We did. It was oh. great. We cut. We cut out the little thing on from the oh. website. We made our little notes, and we all. I have a trans kid that so we put in all our things and all this stuff. So it was like, yeah, we we sent our little our hats, our twenty hats, out into the world. And it's amazing. And you could write like you know what issue is important That's to you. Right. Because what we like, the feminist movement is so encompassing of so many things. Yeah. And I've gotten the opportunity to meet a lot of people who are, you know, very different from me. And like, we even have different politics. Like I was, yeah. you know, a little bit surprised in some ways, but um, to have that is just this way that you can connect with someone. You know, if you're, if you're not there, you can give your contact information. And like you said, someone can send a photo back wearing your hat. And you're like, there it is. <laughs> and we had that happen. So I, so um, some colleagues went, so it was exactly the same situation you were saying. I made a bunch of hats. There were colleagues going that don't knit or quilt or do anything. Mm-hmm. So we, we, I gave them hats and I gave them extra hats and they just, they told me they like randomly gave them on, you know, on the street and in this, uh, whatever the subway is called, the, whatever they call it in DC. Mm-hmm. And, um, mm-hmm. I got notes back from people who said like, I was randomly standing waiting for a cab and mm-hmm. I was saying, I wish I had a hat and someone just randomly handed me it and this, it was your hat. And, um, and then they told me their story in an email and then this, and on the anniversary, they, they emailed again. To say, hey, oh. I'm wearing the hat again, and I want to tell you about my year and and what the hat meant. And it was oh. like, okay, this is the coolest thing oh, that's ever so happened. Beautiful. You know, like, <laughs> and you have that times like a million, right? You hear these stories over and over and over again. But um, yeah, I felt like I was part of stuff. I mean, we, we were here in New Orleans. We we also went out in New Orleans and did the same thing and had you know everything. But but it was still amazing to be part of the DC thing, and that was because of you. Like you oh. gave us a voice and you gave us a place to express ourselves in a way that was incredibly creative and um, and so powerful. I just I'm just so excited to have you here because that that's amazing. Like craft activism, it's really incredible. You know. Thank you. Thank you. You're thank, you. Like, <laughs> um, thank you. I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning how to like kind of absorb those kinds of things because it's you know so much of it was born out of my own personal like limitations and like 
desperations to want to yeah. be a part of it. And I feel like a lot of times, like when people don't feel like they can be a part of something, like yeah. a lot of times that's when like, that's when some really great stuff can happen. Cause you're like, wait, the traditional yeah. ways aren't going to work for me. Like how, like how can this work? And it's just, it was so visible. So- it's I mean, so incredible. it was so incredible. And, mm-hmm. and you, I mean, you've got like all the marches after that, you know yeah. what I mean? Like it was like such a kickoff of like, we will not let our country be destroyed. You know, we are standing up for who we are. And it was so pink. It was so pink, <laughs> you know, like it was incredible, you know, um, it changed the meaning of pink in this incredible way. I think about the pink aisle of kid of girls toys, right? We yeah, think differently yeah. about it. Pink Absolutely. is different now. You know, absolutely. It's much more like I think a lot of times, like it was thought of something that wasn't powerful. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. As you're saying, like you know, all these people who people didn't necessarily see like made this. Happen. I know, right? And, I know. I, mean, that, I wasn't invisible I anymore. Like my yeah. my hor- my sadness. Like I felt like mm-hmm. I was heard because I had a you know 20 pink hats <laughs> 20 pink hats oh that weren't God. really great hats but you know I it didn't matter you know <laughs> like so I'm, oh my god I love this I'm so glad that this is something recorded yeah like I this is this is so like you're you're making my day oh, like, well, my, you're making my day as I said <laughs> I've interviewed like super fancy people for this project and like I'm used to it but like today I was like oh no <laughs> so excited I can't wait. um so okay so I have to tell you we want to get back on to welcome the bl- welcome blanket but um you first so before we get off of this I think that you changed the color pink you made it visible like your impact on who we are at this moment is so huge it's incredible like it's just this incredible, like, I can't, like, you don't have to do anything else in your life, right? You've just, like, you've done this thing. Um, and I don't know, how does that feel? Like, that's huge, right? Huge. It's, it's huge and it's amazing. And it's, you know, I've, um, I, you know, we all have different things that we love to do. And sort of at my core, like, I'm a, I'm a designer and this is a huge design project. And yeah. I've always wanted do something that means something to someone else so this was a huge design um, project it really was wasn't it oh it's amazing but it's also like you know it's humbling like get all out um and it's I mean it's really taught me that we all have voices like we really really do and so I feel this you know I feel very grateful, but I don't, not, but, but I feel really grateful that I, I feel a responsibility to, you know, like stay engaged and figure out like how, how I can keep using my voice. Like, (laughs) I feel like, right. You've got this great voice now. What do you do with it? Yeah. The responsibility of, of like stewardship of all of us. Um, Where were you on the day of the mat, the millions of pink hats being worn? Where were you? So I was staying, um, so I couldn't go to DC, um, because I was, um, part, part of the reason why I couldn't march is I was recovering from an accident and couldn't be in crowds, oh. um, which I'm sure a lot of people, um, I've learned a lot of people have, you know, similar types of situations. Yeah, um, right. so, um, I stayed over Pershing square, which was the se- one of the centers of where the women's march in LA was. Yeah. Huge um, in LA, right? huge in LA and it was incredible because you know I woke up super early and I could like walk down before everyone else got there so you had that kind of excitement of like, the people who show up you know right. <laughs> really really early um and I just you know watched it happen and I could go downstairs like once or twice and kind of see like the huge mass well, of did you exp- did you have a sense that there were going to be that many pink hats uh, you know I think uh not everywhere. Like I saw a lot of posts of people getting on planes and going to DC uh-huh. and just these planes of people wearing pussy hats, yeah. which to- it's like really, really made me feel like this is, you know, this is really happening. <laughs> That's um, so crazy. It was so crazy. And I was, you know, in a lot of ways I was so lucky because I could like look out the window and like yeah. see LA. Wow. Right. We're, 750,000 people in LA I know. and it was in LA was- nobody goes walking in LA right it, like people don't it, get like how it, impressive that is. Oh like I lived in LA I lived there 10 yeah. years like that doesn't happen right there's a lot no. of malaise uh, 
A lot of people, you know, it was like, you know, a, a, a Saturday morning and a lot of, you know, a lot of people often, you know, LA has a lot of stereotypes. Some of them are great and some not as good. And one is that, you know, people kind of say they'll be somewhere and then they don't show up. Totally. And um, the parking and the traffic, like, like people are like, oh, I'm not going because I'm not dealing with that traffic. Right. So it's a real <laughs> sacrifice to go to anything in LA. Yeah. Yeah. They went in our, our local Metro, apparently like people couldn't get on. So they'd all have to go like basically like outbound to the beginning wow. and like from there. And it was, and everyone was wonderful. And I was talking with, um, later on in the day after it was over, uh, I, I was talking with some police officers who were called in and they were called in cause there were just so many people and their reaction was, we've never seen a crowd of people just so like thoughtful and nice. Mm-hmm. Like they were picking Amazing. up their trash. Yeah. <laughs> they were saying hello. Right, right, um, right. And they're like, this is incredible. Yeah. And it was really nice because I was wearing my pussy hat and they asked me about it and I told them and um, I was with my husband and he was like, you know, this is Jaina. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like, you know she, she made this one and um, – <laughs> And, like all those, and, those pink hats, that's, that, that's yeah. her fault. <laughs> yeah, that's your fault. And um, they were like, oh, my God, we didn't know what that was about. Like, that's so kind. That's amazing. And it was just this way of, like, I really, you know, there are a lot of – I've. I'm so proud of so many people within like the progressive movement, the ones who are, you know, re- super vocal. There are a lot of people who are angry for a lot of reasons. Yeah. Um, and I'm very thankful, you know, for them being able to express themselves yeah. the way that they are. For me, um, I, I, I think a Pussy Up Project and also Welcome Blanket is platforms for participation. Yeah. So I have very clear politics, but I try to like step back a little bit and try to make it more of um, trying to figure out how to have more dialogue and more yeah. like support That's and more incredible. conversation. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. And so it's just, you know, when I see that just from like, you know, talking to a police officer who's, you know, not a knitter and yeah. <laughs> a little confused, like what's going on with all these cat hats everywhere? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> why, are there, why are there so much knitting? Like, why do you have like, yeah. like warm hats in LA? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just incredible. And yeah. so it's just, I, I get so excited. Like every single time I talk to someone who has a story about it, like it does not, like I, I I could listen to that for the rest of my life. Now, did like, you know I, it, had, it had it spread? It had spread around the world. Did you know that yeah. before that day happened? Did you guys have an inkling that that was happening? Yeah, I mean, it's we were definitely hearing from people like in the UK, and um, I, I I didn't. I mean, I was really surprised that it was in Japan, just because part of me was like, you know, there's a lot of uh, there's often language barriers, but like I know that I had a friend in Jakarta who was making them. <laughs> so, so I knew that they were that they were going. But yeah. what was a really amazing is International Women's Day, um, March eighth, is a much larger day internationally than in the U.S. Uh-huh. And um, Swiss Parliament. Uh, made pussy hats and there's this like amazing photo <laughs> so of them like <laughs> you know men and women so doing great. it together and like all Love these it. marches and um there's it's sort of right after that um sort of like what can we do how do we keep moving this um yeah. we did a like a virtual global march and the idea was that you could make a sign you know put it on social media like yeah. we put it on our website so you know if you don't use social media you don't have to yeah. <laughs> like you can just, you can use the web you can get there that's cool about where you are and what you care about because I learned so much about you know issues in Australia and Poland and amazing and right amazing and just this huge global sisterhood that you know I I kind of knew was there, but I really started to understand and it's sort of, uh, yeah, really start to understand yeah. and just have so much like love for, like, yeah. it's, it's really, it's amazing how much like women support women yeah. and to really kind of, you know, feel that and see right. that and see it manifested. It's just well, awesome. it's, it's changed the whole diet. I think you're, it changed the dialogue in a huge way, in a profound way that we that's just so insanely cool. And on so I think the Me Too movement, immigration, like all mm-hmm. the other marches that happened, it set a tone of like, you know, be there like you have to show what you care about. You know, you can't yeah. be quiet. 
Um, yeah. I, I think the pink yeah. hats made a huge difference in that, you know? Yeah. And I, I really hope that it, like, a thing that I think is really exciting too is I got a lot of feedback that it was the first time anyone had ever been engaged. Not anyone, but like for a lot of people. Like, there, the, we have a lot gen- of This generation. That, that civil rights is, mm-hmm. is old enough now that we don't have mm-hmm. that experience as a, as a generation or as a community yeah. that's that's more historical is that what you're saying yeah yeah exactly and there are a lot of people who were part of the women's movement of the 70s who are like i haven't done anything like this yeah. you know in decades and i'm you know doing this again like right. this is like one i wish i didn't have to um but you know i have to and i'm here and so cool. it's yeah, really really to. cool to see that transgenerational Hugely. involvement Hugely. yeah 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 Yep, my kid. When we we made um, suffragette banners, you know, like the the um, things the suffragette the the uh, thing I'm, I'm not getting the right word, but the, you know the thing they wore. We did rainbow mm-hmm. ones, and then we had our pink hats on, and oh. we had another sign, and had extra ones for people when we went. And it was in New Orleans, and it was a good sized crowd. And we're not a huge city, so yeah. it was great. It was really great, it, and it felt like we were part of. You know, we weren't quiet. Now we, we have yeah. still have, we still have the welcome blanket. I also want to say that this project. <laughs> definitely came out of there was two reasons that this project started one was I became a full professor and I could do whatever project I wanted without being judged which is huge because I'm at a law school but then <laughs> also on. the watching all of the hats that had been made and the fact that we had made them and that we were so invisible mm-hmm. and that I didn't so this project called just want to quilt what I do is um I interview uh we're trying to understand the quilting industry but I interview mm-hmm. a lot of just regular cultures like that's the majority of people I interview. I interview fancy people and famous people like you mm-hmm. but most of the interviews that we have are just like people who love to quilt and they awesome. find me and their voices are now part of the dialogue cuz very many most of the podcasts that I was listening to were like a famous designer or someone like mm-hmm. selling something or whatever and it, mm-hmm. and your you made me realize that we were so invisible that mm-hmm. I wanted to understand the stories of why I did, why did I like to quilt so much? I love quilting. And there's mm-hmm. all these people just like me, just average people. And the whole industry mm-hmm. is made for me, right? They want me to buy these things and do these things. And I wanted to understand why we were doing it. So that's what this project can. It really came from seeing okay. that sea of pink that I thought, <sighs> wow, there's so many of us out there and nobody's telling our story. Like, what does our story look like? Um, that's and awesome. that's what the project's really about. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I love so- it. I love it. When you're like average people, the thing is, is no one's an average person. No, nobody like, is. And their stories are so much, I mean, the, the, the fancy people are great. Like they're super great. And I'm super grateful to <laughs> yeah, come on. Course, so don't yeah. get me wrong. But I'm always like, every time I fin- finish with somebody whose story has never been told, I'm like, wow, that was like the most amazing hour of like, wow. Like, you know, I get these like, I don't know. They're just like, and they become friends. They become like part of this. We have, we call them the quilting army. And they become yeah. part of our army of people that help and do stuff. And I don't know. It's just been, as a law professor, I, this is like the best project I've ever been on. <laughs> <It's> not like, <laughs> you know, like, oh my God. It's like, every time I go back to the law school, I'm like, okay, you guys are really boring. <laughs> Well, it's, you know, it's, it's so different. I was, um, I was, I was talking to, I was actually talking to a group of attorneys yesterday and I, um, which was really amazing to be talking about the Seattle Welcome Blanket. And it was a a women's group within a law firm and, um, there are both men and women and, you know, who were there. And, um, I was just like, you guys are like the superheroes. Yeah, they are. Right. The lawyers, the, it's the lawyers, right? It's the, uh, it's the activism Plus the yeah. lawyers, it's the people on the street yeah. wearing the pu- the pink hats, yeah. and and the lawyers, it's right? It's yeah, everyone. And I feel like lawyers get a really bad rap. No, they're but, the heroes, like, right? They're they're well, the heroes. I mean they they have so much they have so much potential to do good. Like yeah. <laughs> like I know there's some that don't, but like yeah. there's so much potential. And just you know, as we look at laws and how laws are written, and how they get enforced, and just even understanding the language yeah. of like what's fair and what's not, it's right. um, it's just it's just amazing. It really so is, and really- and to watch it in action. I mean, mm-hmm. I certainly do not wish any of this has happened. This is a nightmare. But we've watched our system in place in ways that we wouldn't have seen as, as citizens mm-hmm. that just operates yeah. every all day long and we don't see it. And now it's yeah. being tested in really interesting, terrible ways. But, yeah, the lawyers are pretty cool. I'm a yeah. copyright lawyer, yeah. so there's not a lot of call for me. <laughs> I'm like, if you have a cop, I'm not even a copyright lawyer. I'm a copyright scholar. I'm not a lie. I'm not even a lawyer. Right. There, like, there, if you want to talk about copyright. Everyone. Everyone. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, exactly. Okay. So yeah. – 
the Welcome Like It project. That, that's why mm-hmm. I reached out to you. Um, and so tell us a little, and it's in Atlanta. We're going to try to get there um, for the okay. show. I'm um, really psyched about it. So tell me about the Welcome Blanket project because I've seen it a couple places. I think you were in Chicago mm-hmm. before, is that right? Mm-hmm. And yeah, now you're it. in Atlanta. So tell me a little mm-hmm. bit about what it is and how people can like connect to it. Great. So uh, the Welcome Blanket Project um, takes the distance of the proposed border wall between the U.S. and Mexico, which is about 2,000 miles, and reimagines it as an inclusive distance, um, which is 2,000 miles of yarn to make individual welcome blankets for new refugees and other immigrants coming to the United States. And so with each blanket, we're asking the maker or the makers um, to include a note about a story that's important to their family, about immigration, migration, or relocation, and some words of welcome and advice about coming to the U.S. And so um, after the show's closed, so right now, this, it was at the Smart Museum at University of Chicago. They're mm-hmm. our inaugural hosts. They're amazing. Um, after the show's closed, they've, um, we've worked on packaging to make them really feel like gifts, and we've worked with different refugee resettlement agencies across the country um, to figure out how to make it kind of easy for them <laughs> you right. know, to like distribute kind of burden. right? Yeah, like to be helpful. Um, right. And so they're going to start to be distributed um, this month in June. Um, and we'll be watching where they go. And our second host, which we're so excited about, is the Museum of Design in Atlanta. And so um, they're going through a similar process. And we're like, you know, we're learning from each part of it because it's, you know, it's activism within the context of a museum. Um, Everyone is invited to participate. Um, we started off with a knit pattern, um, which is a diagram of 16 squares. Uh, but the real design guideline is we're asking for about 40 inches by 40 inches um, so that it's you know l- large enough for a child or a lap blanket so it can really be multi-purpose. Yeah. Um, and then the design guideline is make something you would like to receive. And so they have to be. Yeah. So, are you taking any kind of like blanket that's made, mm-hmm. or just knitted stuff? We'll take knitted, crochet, woven, quilted. Cool. We love quilters. Yeah. They're amazing. Um, there have been some amazing things that have come through, and you know, the craft world out there is very creative. So, I'm yeah. sure there are other things that I'm not mentioning, and those are welcome also. Okay, so, so I've been like oh. wanting to make stuff for you, but I'm a bit shy. Oh. So, I feel like I don't really know. Like the the pussy hat was easy because I just like it was pink hat. You have patterns, yeah. but like, who, what should we be thinking about? Like sometimes I think like it won't be cute enough, or maybe it needs to have a message, or like what is it that you're looking for in the blankets? You know, really like for people to put their heart into it. Like that's really it's it's really wonderful. Um, you know, some people are like, well, what colors should we right. do? And if they're for and- kids, and are they political? Or like, I have a lot of doubt. So I'm not sure. I feel like I'm not, I want to make stuff, but I always feel like either, I just don't know. I'm just a little insecure. Yeah. Well, well, there are a couple, well, there are a couple of things. One is if you need some inspiration, um, our website is welcomeblanket.org. Um, and go to the gallery page and we cataloged all of the blankets that have come into the smart. Okay. I'm going there right now. So okay, keep, keep chatting so they're right like thirty five. They're thirty five hundred that have come in. Wow! And so we've actually already done two thousand miles, but we're doing it again. That's really like great. Totally That's cool. Really and like in my mind, like we're really gonna be wrapping the world. Like, That's just really like, great. I love it. Yeah, just like a whole bunch of love. Um, and you know, they're all different kinds. They're and all some different people, kinds. Like they're like regular ones. They're like so. Those people oh, yeah. listening. Don't be scared yeah. because I was scared. No, I should have just gone to your website because like they're granny blank. They're granny square. I have one I can mm-hmm. just give you. I have granny squares. They're rainbow. They're little, they're regular mm-hmm. um, piece, piece quilts. They're yeah. fancy ones. They're, they're everything, right? They're everything. 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 So some of them you can totally tell are someone's first project. And how amazing is that? Yeah. Like, you right. know, someone learning how to do something for someone else. Like that yeah. is just as wonderful and beautiful like That's the idea so is cool. that from one person to another yeah. and um I am so I am the grandchild of immigrants on um, all sides yeah. yeah and I and I am just, a grandchild of immigrants as well yeah and yeah. it's it's just you know it my I did you grow up around your grandparents or I did I did, I did. yes and like did you have that like I always felt very 
like I was I was raised with this idea of the American dream and this yeah. idea of immigration and this That's idea right. of the potential of the United States right. is just hugely. You know, That's right. In, it's an incredible place and and a, re- um, a refuge from yeah. times when things aren't good for people and like we we're better than mm-hmm. you know we're not always good but we yeah. we try to be a, a place that there's something important here something important and something that can be built and you know a place that you know can be very difficult but also welcoming and yeah. three yeah. of my grandparents I think came through Ellis Island wow. and so the ones that I grew up with you know kind of at their at their knees like I'd hear stories of like seeing the Statue of Liberty yeah and how they just felt like they had made it like finally that's really cool um, it's so cool. And then you see, like, people are coming through LAX now, which yeah. is amazing. Like, please, like, please, may they come through LAX. Right. Like, let's keep it coming. But there's not that sense of symbolism or arrival yeah. or welcome. And, like, Welcome Blanket in many ways is a way of, like, from, like, you know, person to person of really showing a symbol of welcome. That's really That's cool. Also- now, will you people know. like? So, I'm looking. I've been looking on the website. It's mm-hmm. everything, even just tied. You know, the kind mm-hmm. where you tie it and um, they're like, I don't know, flannelly flannel tie things, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. But there are quilts and everything. Okay, we can totally quilting everything. army listening. We can totally make these. This is not hard. This is oh, this is awesome. we can do this. This is not at all, at all difficult. Um, so is it like, this is, <laughs> I'm not afraid, I am yeah, ready to go. I'm not even paying attention. I am already starting to think about the quilt I have to make when I get off the oh, phone with you. Amazing. Um, okay. Yeah. So there's patterns, tutorial, and then the welcome note. So yeah. it's like the pink hats yeah. where you make, yeah. Mm-hmm. So then are you having people just print this out? How are you, you, are you asking them to put labels on them or like, what are you, what are you doing exactly for the note? Situation. So for the note, um, we put up a template. So um, I think it's the two main questions: the share share a story that's important to you yeah. about immigration and migration and relocation, um, and then some words of welcome and advice. And then um, if uh, if your listeners can be using as much as it's the easier to care for is yeah. probably best right. um, because. You know, people don't necessarily um, <laughs> well, you want to make yeah, it as they're, they're, easy as they're meant to be to used, right? It. So that was my worry yeah. is that I thought maybe, you know, I've been e- e- interviewing these people that are incredible um, quilters and I'm like got really shy. But that's not what this is about. This is about like yeah. all of our other charity quilting that we do, 40 by 40, make them for yeah. kids, make them for people, just make them like what you yeah. normally make. Uh, and so they're mm-hmm. washable and things like that. They're, not, they're to be used. Yeah, they're not, yeah. they're not, don't use felt or anything like that, like use like real stuff. Yeah. Use, use the stuff that, you know, you'd, you'd want to have like in your house. Um, and you know, some people have really taken it on as like a major design project and that's fantastic, but that should not be, that should not be a reason to not do it. Like, (laughs) no, that was totally my reason. I was like, I'm not clever enough, but that's not, it's really just average people making quilts. It's just like the hats. It's not scary. Um, yeah, if you yeah. want to sort of give a uh, blanket to an immigrant and mm-hmm. feel like you're part of the kind of welcome to our country kind of thing, mm-hmm. then we do it. This is what this is what it's about, right? Exactly, and they're they're go- they're all being distributed, at, you know, at the pace to make sure that they go to the right place and they're cared for, right. um, which is why they don't just kind of get like you know given to, like on the side of the road. <laughs> like, like, hey, they're are very, you good? Hey, 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 welcome. <laughs> Yeah, welcome. Here you You're go. Like at like the like Canadian it. border, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like at different right. borders at the airport. They're like, exactly. "Hey, I'm not, you know, exactly. I live here." So it's working. Yeah, so it's working with different different groups. You know, grassroots, oh. federally funded. Yeah, um, we found them through them finding us. So you know, cool. sort of like finding different trails. So it's so it's just you know figuring out what they need because you know they're different sizes. They're getting different numbers of yeah. people. They have different numbers of staff. So yeah. So are how so how um me. how serious are you about the forty by forty thing? Are you is that really what um, everybody should be focused on? <laughs> Quilters are usually the ones who are like, no, that's not okay. Um, <laughs> we're trying to keep it around forty. By because oh, they're like that's way too small and we designed this originally as a knit project so uh-huh. you know there's much more stretch to it and stuff like that right you know kind of keep it around in that area yeah. um you know but if it ends up here that's cool like we're not we're not sending anything back like 
this is the You're reason why 40 by 40 is so that we can kind of know. <laughs> yeah, 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 we're not, we're not judging. No, yeah, no, no that rulers. stitching is not cool. Um, it's really great. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Yeah. No, every, everyone is welcome. And this is a guideline. That's so, so um, well, the pictures are amazing. And to yeah. see all the different, qu- again, it's this like this sea of love that you, because I always believe, I really do believe that with, oh. this is my own feeling is that as you make these things, you do imbue love. Mm-hmm with it like you yes. like there's something more than just that you put this thing together it there's more to it you know I, I don't know yeah it's you know? it's incredible and I love um you know I with quilting this is also something you can do with someone else you know yeah. like if you, it feels like you, you know if you want to team up on something that's right it's totally great like there are a lot of um sort of like the sample pattern cat quill who had designed the pussy hat um this is also like another diagram so like yeah. you know you can get together with a bunch of friends and um I come from a knit crochet side um yeah. so people can get together and do it together yeah um well, and you've got someone here that even were painted, you know? right? These were paint. They were, oh. You have painted ones. You have the is that the Statue of Liberty that's painted? Oh no, I think it got stitched in it's somehow, stitched or it might have been dyed in. Dyed in. There dyed fabrics. Liberties. It's ah, just very clever. It also, like people have used um, a lot that's in their stash. Yeah. Also, this is a great stash project and like yeah. a great way to figure oh, out. Yeah, it is. It's applique. It looks like it looks painted when you first see it, but it looks like it's applique. Mm-hmm. That's insane. People are insane. amazing. People are incredible. Yeah. And, you know, the people, you know, the super creative, super, you know, super, super, like I've never seen before are incredible. And so are the ones of the people who just, like, honestly, just learned yeah. or just, you know, did this because right. they wanted to be part of it. It's this is cool. That's so cool. This is about everyone. Yeah, this is. Great. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. It really everyone. is amazing. Now, have you ever, once you had the, did you, are you doing anything about laying them out or sort of – how do you exhibit them? How do you sort of – like they they look really impressive in the picture, but are you mm-hmm. trying to make a border? Are you doing anything physical with them? Yeah, so um, we're – it's site-specific. So, um, so at like these – so at the Smart Museum, we had a combination of having them stacked as like single ones and also kind of created this wall and other ones where they draped. So this whole room just felt completely enveloped by them, really cool. um, which is super cool. Um, and other, you know, I can see other situations where it would just seem like one very, very long wall that's stacked, um, yeah. but that's a different kind of site. Um, I think right now Moda started off with a starter kit from the Smart Museum. So some of the ones that um, we received after deadline, I believe, because um, we kept getting them. Yeah. <laughs> like, Smart just kept getting blankets. That's so um, way after they could have played. <laughs> That's those, really great. I love it. it. It's really cool. And so those um, have, you know, they, they get their moment uh, or some of them uh, get their moment, you know, in the sun um, in a museum exhibition. Yeah. And so they're starting off with um, sort of like, half folded and hanging so it's with quilts they're easier to you know because of the elasticity or the different kinds of elasticity they're easier to display you yeah. know as a square um knit is more you know complicated because it starts kind of stretching and stuff so yeah. it's it's really figuring out what the pieces are so that's why we say basically like 40 by 40 so you kind of know what yeah. <laughs> kind of how to like show these all together yeah um, and then really, you know, taking very good care of them. Um, they're in a museum setting at right. this smart, like there was a whole freezing process of making sure, you know, that they were museum quality being shown, um, which is just, um, you know, it's really, really lovely. That's and really cool. Yeah. It's, now, it's do you really have a, cool. do you have, um, so will, how long, it's in Atlanta till like September or something, right? How long is it in Atlanta? <laughs> I think until September 8th, I yeah, believe. Yeah, because we're trying to get of, there. Yeah. yeah it's part yeah. of um, the Making Change exhibition, which is curated by Betsy Greer, who's... Um, yeah, it's got a whole bunch of stuff. It's got, like, yeah. the cross-stitch thing and yeah. um, some of the quilters that we've interviewed, like um, Sean Kimber and mm-hmm. others that are in that exhibit. I, I We have That's to go. Awesome. It just seems like an incredible... Um, thing. And they yeah. also have a guitar thing going on. So I was like, spouse, my spouse is totally into oh, guitar. So I'm like, okay, road trip. 
<laughs> oh my god, that's so cool. I'm I'm actually I'm actually due with my first baby in a couple of weeks. Oh, so how great. I'm gonna Congrats. like full on like miss the whole oh. like the whole thing. So everyone I'm like, you've gotta go take pictures. Oh Tell me all so about sweet. it. <laughs> that's so sweet. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's yeah. really sweet. Yeah, because I don't know if I'll be able to get there at the end or not. So right. Like, oh. Right. Uh-huh. Now if um <laughs> that's very sweet. That's so sweet. Yeah. Um yeah. now how they just go to the website which is blank mm-hmm. welcome www.welcomblanket.org that's how yeah. if you're in, if you're listening mm-hmm. and you want to do something if you make the if you make it where do you send it so um the address is for moda um and it's on our front page i can look for it right now okay. um, no, it's okay. on a peach tree street right don't don't yeah so it's all going no, directly to, to the museum <laughs> Yeah, so um, send it to you. Welcome Blanket at Moda, uh, okay. 1315 cool. Peachtree Street, Northeast. Very Atlanta. cool. And it looks like we can start sending them now, but all the oh, way yeah. through August 25th. Is that right? Is it like an oh. ongoing thing? It's an ongoing thing. So we're just building it up again. Um, so and cool. so, yeah, go go for it. Go That's for so it. Cool. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you all listeners who are participating. Totally. We, okay, Quilting Army. We so have yeah, to do quilting this. Quilting Army. Right, Absolutely. the Quilting Army. Yes, we're we're growing. We're growing. We're like, you know, small but mighty. So I think we've got like 600 in our army now. So It's amazing. Uh, I know. It's weird, right? The world is really weird. So, yeah. So we do field trips and we talk about things. And, of course, I'm really interested in copyright and intellectual property. But that's just a little bit of what we do. So, yeah. Um, so any so last question for you yes. any intellectual property issues that have come up in either projects have you had any issues with that um trying to figure out so pussy Hat Pro- both of these we put out the pattern for free yeah um, pussy Hat project um it's, it's kind of figuring out um you know to make sure that it's used in a way that supports women's rights yeah um, and sort of how that works. So in general, when, you know, we, we want, we want proceeds, you know, to go to supporting women's rights and not <laughs> necessarily reasons that don't. Yeah. So we're trying to figure out that part. Did you have to send um, any I, cease and desist yeah. letters? Or did you have any backlash from the project? I imagine, have you had, has it been, has there been problems at all with either project because of the political environment we're in? Not, you know, I think... By what do you by backlash in terms of any of the things I don't know mean people um, I don't know like well they're definitely mean people and trolls okay. um and I think that that's a little bit of knowing that in this day and age if there isn't a troll like nothing's right. Yeah, right. they don't know what happened right um right. like you you need that yeah. or you're not relevant is that what you're saying <laughs> a little bit yeah. a little bit it's been much. Um, you know, there's a very clear iconography with Pussy Hat Project, you know, like the cat hat, it's pink, you know, it's yeah. very easy to spot. Welcome right. Blanket, because it's, you know, do something that moves you, is much harder to see. Yeah. Um, what's really interesting about Welcome Blanket is I've gotten such across the board great feedback and a lot of it comes out of something I find very surprising is I thought women's rights wasn't like really that political like I know I know that's not true but like I was like who wouldn't support you know women's rights as human rights like who who would be against that that doesn't make any sense right um I didn't realize how much more controversial that would be um versus something like couching welcome blanket as you know we all have a story within our family yeah let's talk about it let's talk about like immigration right and people really start to melt on it that's like, really interesting really yeah and I've talked to people who are Trump supporters who really like welcome blanket a lot that's really interesting yeah we just yeah. talked to someone named um Andrea Sang Jackson mm-hmm. she was an artist in residence at the Canadian Museum of Immigration and she oh, did a project there, and they have artists in residency project, and they're at in Halifax, and oh, cool. everybody came through. That's that's one of the places you had you came through if you were coming mm-hmm. from the Atlanta. So it yeah. might be someone, and not that you know everything, but I'm saying that might be an interesting place yeah. that they've already done an artist in residency program where they had a big quilt made from people. So 
um, so cool. be really interesting to see if they would be interested in your welcome blanket project because they, oh, they've already done you. one, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Canadian, like, right? Welcome blanket Canadian style. You know, they're they're right? our neighbors, right? right so, exactly. This is, so This is a project um, about neighborliness. So right, exactly. Well, we just interviewed her. I'll put you in touch with her if you're interested because well, oh, she was way wonderful. into that. Um, and she made a really – and her, her quilt – it was like very controlled in the sense that they had little squares and things that she did when mm-hmm. in the museum where people would tell their stories about immigration. Um, and it won um, at QuiltCon. Like it won a, an award at QuiltCon for like best bee, um, be, like B-E, like sewing bee. Like the, it was really gorgeous. It's a gorgeous quilt. That's so, awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. seems like you guys are like, you know, in the same genre of uh, community activism. Yeah. yeah. By crafts. Yeah. community activism by crafts it's 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 really amazing how much the craft community really can come together and it takes you know it takes all kinds like yeah. they're I love these projects because they're good for like extroverts they're good for introverts totally. like right. <laughs> so great everyone, everyone can find a place if they want to be a part of it and yeah you know, that's remarkable. Like, now I keep saying because yeah. there's also um, Sarah Trail who does the Social Justice Sewing Academy in Oakland. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, do you know? Do you know her? Yeah, I like there's a bunch that. of you that are just so insanely cool. Like you all have to like I like like do you guys all meet up or like there should be like a thing, <laughs> right? Like like where, how do you get all the cool people in one room together? Like it's just really I interesting, know. you know? I there's know. really cool I've stuff had... going on. Oh my goodness, there's so many cool things, and I've had the like I've. I've been so happy because I got to meet Shannon Downey who's badass cross stitch um when I was oh in yeah Chicago. right badass cross stitch right yeah, that's part yeah. of this show too right yeah yeah she's doing her story I think it's in the same room um where people can be cross stitching their own personal stories that's so crazy um, that's so, so great cool and so wonderful and it's just you know it's so great because I I fangirled her and she's like yeah let's hang out and now like, <laughs> like oh my goodness yeah, we're like, we should do a project together. And we haven't quite, you know, life, life has happened. She's life has happened. Well, you know, baby and other things and big projects. Yeah, and stuff. yeah. all these yeah. things. But it's so yeah. cool to know that, like, our projects are in, like, the same room. It's like, just oh, so, wow. I know, but there's just, like. So cool. And she's right. such great stuff. Yeah. It's she's amazing. 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 Like, the stuff that's mm-hmm. happening is just amazing. And all the protest quilts that happened um, oh. are incredible. Mm-hmm. They're incredible. Um, mm-hmm. They're so moving. The art is, like, I don't know. There's something about, for me at least, for quilting, there's something about the quilt as an art genre that just really gets me every time, you know. So. It's it's amazing. And sort of the way that it's um, – I have a background in visual arts, and so I did a lot of, like, painting and installation. Yeah. And so – see these like I I paint in a very kind of I build up and build up and build up yeah. which is different than like you know the planning of like the quilting and it's right. just the deliberateness it has to be to do what oh you're doing is gosh. incredible right it's yeah. amazing and yeah. it's um like the threads of resistance yeah um, the threads of project. resistance yeah incredible amazing. Right? and yeah and there's yeah. one that you know is kind of extra close to my heart because it has a really large pussy hat in the middle of it but the artist totally. who needs, and I'm forgetting who the artist is so um yeah it's good to look it up on threads of resistance um but every square represented a certain number of the people who were marching amazing and right so like every single tiny piece like yeah. has meaning and it's so well thought out and I just I have really like I I am very looking forward to becoming someone who's a um, mediocre quilter yeah, me too. I'm totally <laughs> mediocre quilter but I appreciate the arts of all of it you're in my thoughts all of the time I'm always saying I am wearing you cannot see it but I'm wearing my pink hat today that's so cool yeah so cool and you know feminists come in all different you know shapes you know genders expressions so we need everyone in there you let us you let us be who we are and I really appreciate it every single day and you helped do that you helped us give us a voice and we're not and we're not in the dark and I think we were and I think that this is huge you made a huge huge difference at least in my life and um a lot of a lot of people so Thank you so you much. Really, you're amazing. Yes. Ah.
But a total pleasure. And the thing is, all of these happen because everyone ships in. That's right. Right? Everyone. The power of, like, the power. Like, that's the quilting army. The, the power is so the much greater army. than one person. But you do have to have someone like you that sort of thinks it up and does it and commits to it and has an entrepreneurial spirit and just makes mm-hmm. it happen, which is just incredible that you did that mm-hmm. in such a short period of time. And now the wank- local blanket, which is just so warm. I mean, there's nothing better than a blanket, right? To nothing make you feel lo- loved and cuddled and... Um, yeah. that's the, la- that's the project I'm working on right now. My, as I said, my kid is trans mm-hmm. and she's in a whole group mm-hmm. of kids that are, um, you know, they're all kinds of all different ways, but I'm making, mm-hmm. uh, rainbow and transgender colored, uh, quilts this year. Um, so yeah. that when they, once they graduate from high school in a couple of years, they'll each get one so that they have something to, to hold on and love when things are a little harder or when things are good. That's but that's my own personal little project that I'm working on. Uh, so there's lots of rainbow I can't wait stuff. to see them. Yeah, I can't wait to see them too because they're all super different. So it's like if you take the rainbow palette and you make every kind of quilt you can imagine, but different with but but rainbows oh the theme. That's sort of what we're what I'm doing at the moment. Just me personally because I kind of got bored just making. I'm, I quilt every night, so I made like 35 quilts in a year. Oh my so. gosh! Yeah. It's totally insane. <laughs> I don't make fancy quilts. I make I make quilts like see I can just send them to you. So I have yeah, lots just, of quilts. Just keep sending them along. They're going to be so loved by yes, people. Exactly. So That's the goal. So yeah. Okay, quilting army. We got to make forty by forty quilts and send them on to Atlanta. Yes. That's our next. That's our thing. Well, I have had such a great yeah. hour with you. I'm so so Me psyched. Too. It's been um, such a pleasure. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. It's, and it's- Thing. And do let me know if the project's going on, and we can, uh, or, or any new projects. I would love for you to come back on. So um. wonderful! Thank you so much, and thank right. you for. And who's, do you don't need to the time to listen as well? Oh, and you don't need to review this, right? You're good with what we said. I think it's fine. Okay. Um, I think you would know if I said anything particularly embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, no, you. Have, it's very normal. I mean, I think you know only but, people want to review it when they're talking about their business or yeah. they're telling me their price list or something like that. And that's not no. that we weren't doing anything like that. So I think we're good. No. I think, and I think sort of the heart and soul of these projects are very, very shareable. So I agree. Um, I totally agree. Awesome. All right, you're so beyond awesome. It's at oh. Moda, which is um, not the fabric company Moda, but the Mo- Museum of Design and art uh, um museum of design atlanta atlanta museum yeah. of design atlanta it's on now through september quilting army mm-hmm. we are tara miller is there in atlanta we are going to atlanta we got to figure out when we're going um so mm-hmm. if you're interested message me on our facebook group because we're going to go see these we're going to make blankets we're going to come as an army and give a bunch of blankets hopefully so we'll see what happens that's but amazing that's our goal cool. Thank all right you. Fab. Thank you. oh and one last yeah. One last thing, which yeah. is on social media, we're welcome blanket on everything. Just yeah, one welcome word. Blanket. Okay, we'll, we'll include you. And then we're going to, uh, I'll post this and I'll let you know when it's out. So uh, spread the word and they can listen to it and learn more about you and your project. So Perfect. Thank you so much. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. You too. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye. So this is Elizabeth Townsend Guard. You've been listening to Just Want a Quilt, a research podcast coming out of Tulane University Law School. We want to hear from you. Join our army, our quilting army. Go to our Facebook page. Suggest people to be interviewed. Suggest yourself to be interviewed. We are excited to hear from you. But most importantly, I hope you get a chance to quilt today.